Hi, my name is Elpa Skorsky, and I'm the current president of Acre Student Farm at the University of Wyoming. So this is our second video in our Acres seminar series, and it'll be on strawberries. Just to recap our video series so far, last week we posted sorrel, and next week we'll be doing carrots. Um, each week on Fridays, we'll post a video about a plant. We can grow in Laramie. So the summary of this week. So a description of what strawberries are, how to grow them in Laramie, how to store them and preserve them, how to use them, and a pie recipe for them. So a description of strawberries, I'm sure you're all familiar with the fruit strawberries, um, but just in case you aren't, they're a red heart-shaped little berry with little seeds. They're uh, pictured here uh, between the rhubarb and the sorrel. They're sweet and they can be slightly tart depending on the variety. And the plant is a perennial, it's hardy to zone three, so it can survive in Laramie, which is zone four. So how to start them? Um, they will need high organic matter. So at La in Laramie, you will have to amend the soil with compost or some other organic matter. But you're, if you're gonna sow them from seed, which I personally don't do, I have never seen done, you're gonna wanna wait until the soil has warmed. Uh, what we do at Acres is we use bare root plants. So you'll just order the plants from whatever nursery and you'll plant them before they dry out or get moldy. Otherwise they won't live. Uh, my mom and other people, other gar like home gardeners use potted plants, which are easier because you just stick them in the ground. You can also use the runners from your existing plants to propagate them cheaply and well, freely. So what you're going to do is you're gonna wait for the runner to come out, which is basically just a little horizontal stem above the ground. You're gonna leave that in place for little roots. You'll see them on the bottom. Um, some leaves will pop up on a node and there'll be tiny little roots on the bottom. Then you'll cut them off and you'll stick this thing in water. And you'll wait until you can see bigger roots. Like, so it looks like there's enough roots for them to survive in soil. And when that happens, you'll plant them in soil and you'll wait until they seem to take off and then you can transplant them into your garden. So this picture on the right is of the strawberries we propagated from runners last fall. Uh, I did this with a high school group. I don't remember what, my, what high school they were from, but they did the part where they cut off all the ones with little roots and placed in water. And then I waited for them and then eventually transplanted them. So the thing about runners though, is if you have a lot of them, they're gonna take energy away from fruit, produ fruit production. So if you have a lot of runners, you're gonna get less fruit. So if you wanna focus on fruit and not expanding how many plants you have, you should cut off the runners when you see them. How to maintain the strawberries. Um, so we use Seascape at Acres. The reason we use this is because they store a bit better than some, but still taste good. This is important for us because our schedule is kind of, we harvest either in the morning before markets or CSA, or maybe even the day before, probably now with strawberries. Um, we're gonna harvest them and we want them to still be good, both at market and when the customer takes them home. You know, it doesn't really make sense for us to give, sell them to somebody and then they're just gross by the time they get home. So we just really want to make sure we have a quality product. So Seascapes have worked for us. They've also really worked well. Um, they're an everbearing variety, which means basically that they start producing depending, it depends where you are, but um, in our hoop house, usually like May or June um, versus June bearing strawberries, which only produce at the beginning of the summer. Um, so our Seascape strawberries being ever bearing will start producing and then keep producing into the fall even end of summer into fall maybe. Um, so this picture here is taken about one year ago in late April, I believe it was April 27th, 2019. Um, I'm pointing at a flower that's already shown up, which obviously like in Laramie at the end of April, it's not warm out. And I was just so amazed like, oh my gosh, there are already flowers here. And that's because ours are in a hoop house. So it's a lot warmer in there. Um, those never produced, those didn't produce, um, fruit until later on. I don't know why. They kind of just like, they formed a flower, but then it never became fruit. It became this weird brown thing. I'm not, I'm still not sure what that was exactly, but it was really interesting to see. Also, you can kind of see in this picture that some of them are, some of the leaves are kind of light green. This is because we had an iron deficiency. Um, the soils in Laramie are deficient in iron, or it's hard to get the iron into the plant. So you're going to have to use an iron fertilizer if you're just planting in the ground like year after year. So we just bought um, a liquid from Ace and mixed it into water and just watered all the plants. They're also 
like pellet forms and other forms of iron fertilizer. But if you notice your leaves are getting kind of light colored, that may be the reason why. So you'd have to apply an iron fertilizer. Uh, another important fertilizer is phosphorus. This is because phosphorus is important for fruit production. So if you notice you're not getting a lot of fruit off your plants, which happened to us in the middle of last summer, it could be because it's deficient of phosphorus, at which point you'll have to apply a fertilizer with phosphorus. The way to look for this is either see a fertilizer that just says like phosphorus fertilizer, or every fertilizer will have an NPK ratio on it, which is basically like three numbers with hyphens in between it. And so you're gonna want that middle number to be higher than the other two numbers. Another thing you'll have to do in Laramie is irrigate them about an inch a week. What we do is we just have drip line under this black weed fabric in this photo, and we just keep it on for like a few hours every day. Uh, they never got overwatered. It wasn't an issue in Laramie. As I mentioned before, hoop houses are really good in Laramie because it's cool here. So if you want to extend your season, it's good to have a big hoop house over them. So both protect them from maybe if it does get like an extreme temperature and it will keep the temperature warmer when it's cold. So you'll have a longer season. And to harvest strawberries, just wait until they're red and then just pick them off. So winterizing strawberries is also very important in Laramie um, and, and elsewhere. What you'll definitely do is wait until the well, you, okay, either you can wait until the leaves have gotten brown and crunchy or you cannot wait. But after your harvest is done, whenever you want that to be, um, you'll just cut down this year's growth because if you leave all that crunchy stuff on there, you know, it'll um, block sun from getting to the new growth the next year. This isn't as important if it's outdoors as opposed to inside a hoop house because in my experience, the strawberries outdoors will get rid of their old leaves. They'll just kind of fall off and blow away. But especially if it's in a hoop house or covered up, you're going to have to make sure you cut it down. Um, if it's not in a hoop house in Laramie, you might want to cover it with mulch once temperatures consistently get into the 20s. Uh, this is so that the really cool temperatures in Laramie don't harm the next year's growth. Um, in Minnesota here, my mom's strawberries, we've never done that and they're fine. You know, the, they probably, it probably would be better if we did it, but they survive, but if you're concerned, you can cover them with a light mulch, something that won't like crush them too much. And getting into, away from our growing and into our storing and preserving and cooking with, um, there are a lot of ways to store and preserve strawberries. Just sticking them in your fridge is a one of them. Anybody who's bought them from the store or grow them themselves will know that they don't last super long in the fridge, especially the ones you grow in your own garden. Um, so the ones are seascape varieties. They, they only last really a day or two in the fridge in my experience. Um, so if you want to keep them longer, uh, the easiest thing would probably just be to freeze them. When you thaw them, they'll be squishy, so they wouldn't really be good just for eating raw, or not raw, yeah, raw. Um, so you'd want to maybe bake with them or, yeah, really bake with them um, if you freeze them. You can also dehydrate the strawberries. I've tried doing this. I did it wrong, so it didn't work out too well. Um, pro tip, make sure that you grease down the dehydrator so that it doesn't stick to it, which happened to me. You can also make jams or jellies or wine to preserve your strawberries. So how to use them otherwise besides those aforementioned things. Um, obviously eat them fresh. You can put them in salads and smoothies and a fruit salsa or any type of dessert that you can think about. They're a good, good source of fiber and vitamin C. Obviously, they also have a lot of sugar in them being fruits, so you can't just eat a willy-nilly, but you know, it's better than eating a candy bar. So it's, it's a good excuse to get something sweet, but not you know, feel guilty about what you put in your body, I guess. So here's a little idea for you if you have strawberries, um, a strawberry pie. So what you're going to do is make a filling out of the strawberries, sugar, cornstarch, and gelatin, maybe other ingredients depending on what recipe you pick. And then you're gonna put this filling inside a pie crust. This pie crust can be a normal crust that you kind of bake, or it could be one of those graham cracker crusts that you don't have to bake, or anything really. This is a really versatile recipe. We will be including at least one link in our, on our website. So definitely check that out. Um, in conclusion, so you can easily grow strawberries in Laramie, but you're gonna have to help them out a bit. You can't just kind of leave them there because they need more water and organic matter and some fertilizer than a native grass would. 
So stay tuned for Keras next week. And as I mentioned before, we'll have our recipes and also our sources in our website. Thank you.